Hello and welcome to this screencast where we're going to learn how to adjust the graphics view in GeoGebra. Let's start by plotting a function by typing its formula into the input bar. The function I'm going to use here is f of x equals x cubed minus 4 times x squared. As you can see, the function is plotted, but it's far from the best view that I can have for this graph. There's a large part of it cut off at the bottom and too much showing over here on the right. Plus, I might like to change some of the visual aspects of the plot before considering it done. For example, the color or adding a grid. So we're going to do the following to this graph. First, we're going to change the x values so that the graph only goes from x equals negative 1 to x equals 5. Then we're going to change the y values so that the full behavior of the graph is shown. I don't know exactly what those y values are going to be, so I'll need to experiment. I also want to add a grid to the picture change the color and thickness of the graph to make it stand out, and finally I'd like to attach the formula for this function onto the graph itself as a label. So let's begin with those last three items, adding the label and the grid and changing the color and thickness, because I can do those directly from the graphics view. In the graphics view, look for the down arrow next to the word graphics. Click that down arrow to reveal some buttons. The first button toggles the axes on and off. We'll leave them on for now. The second button toggles the grid on and off. Turn the grid on. The third button controls the graph color. Let's change this one to blue. The fourth button gives you options for line style and thickness. I'll leave the style solid for now, but I could change it to various forms of dashed. But I will also slide the thickness up a little. Finally, the fifth button controls the label shown on the graph. For this one, I'm going to select name and value, and that will put f of x, which is the name of the function, and x cubed minus 4x squared, which is the value of that function, onto the graph itself. If the label doesn't show up in a good position, you can move it by selecting the Move tool and then dragging the label. Now let's change the x and y range on the graph. We do this by right-clicking on the graphics view somewhere, and then select the icon that says Graphics. This brings up a series of menu pages allowing me to change a number of preferences. Note the row of five tabs across the top. The first tab gives me advanced options for altering the properties of the graph itself, including all the things I just did from the graphics view. However, to change the X and the Y range, we're going to want to click on the second tab for Preferences Graphics. Notice that there are four items here, Basic, X-axis, Y-axis, and Grid. Under Basics, you can enter in the dimensions of the graph directly. Let's change the X range from negative 1 to, neg to X equals 5 first. Now when I go back to the graph, the X range is changed. I'd also like to change the Y range, but I don't know exactly to what. So I'll simply experiment until I have something that looks good. Now I can see from the graph that the behavior of this graph isn't very interesting past Y equals 3. So let's first try Y equals negative 8 to Y equals 4. I think I need to go further down, so let me change that negative 8 to a negative 10. And that's better. This is a pretty good finished product because I can see all the major points of interest on this graph, and I'm not forced to look at anything that doesn't matter. We could stop here, but it's worth looking through some of the other menu items in the Preferences Graphics window for future reference. Under X-axis, I can change the spacing and shape of the tick marks as well as the labels. Similarly for the Y-axis under Y-axis. Under Grid, I can choose whether to use regular rectangular or Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, or isometric. I can also control how far apart the grid line should be, what style the grid line should be, and the color of the grid lines. There are many other options you can control from the Preferences window, and you should take time to explore this window so you'll have a sense of what you can do and where to go in order to do it. Thanks for watching.